Okay, welcome to the deep dive. We're here to unpack complex ideas and uh, really pull out the key insights for you. Today, we are diving into a big one in organic chemistry synthesis. It's, well, it's chapter 15 in organic chemistry as a second language, a topic that's super important, but let's be honest, sometimes feels a bit daunting. Our mission here is pretty straightforward give you a clear guide through this chapter. Synthesis isn't just knowing reactions. It's about, you know, how you actually build molecules. It's strategic. Exactly. It's really the flip side of what you probably started with predicting products. Right. Where they give you the ingredients and you say what happens. Precisely. Predicting products is starting material. Add these reagents. What do you get? Starting material plus reagents. Easy question mark. But synthesis flips that right around. You're given the starting material and you're given the final product you want. The question mark is in the middle. What reagents, what steps do you need to get there? Starting material plus question mark product. And uh, these problems can be, well, anything from just one step, pretty simple, to these really complex sequences where the thing you make looks almost nothing like what you started with. Yeah, and this is where it gets really interesting. The book makes this uh, this really strong statement. Synthesis is organic chemistry, not just part of it, the core. It uses this analogy, which I think is perfect learning chess. Mm -hmm. First, you learn how the pieces move, right? The knight goes like this, the bishop like that. Yeah, those are your individual reactions. You learn what they do. But just knowing the moves doesn't make you a chess player, does it? You need Wait. strategy. You have to think ahead, plan things out. Exactly. Hmm. And you can't just say, oh, I know how the pieces move, but I'm just not good at the strategy part. That is the game. And it's the same for organic chemistry. You absolutely cannot succeed, especially if things get more advanced, if you don't get synthesis. It's not like an optional extra you can skip. So all the reactions, the mechanisms, everything you've learned. It all leads here. It's all preparation for this strategic thinking. And the only way, the only way to get good at it is practice. The book is really clear on this. No cramming the night before. Definitely not for this. Okay. It just doesn't work. Organic chemistry and synthesis especially, it's about really understanding it, mastering the connections, not just memorizing isolated facts. Okay, so practice is key. What does that actually look like? Let's start with the basics. One-step okay. syntheses. The book says these are the foundation. And they shouldn't be any harder than predicting products, fundamentally. If you know the reaction, you know it both ways. Right. And there's a cool practice method suggested. You make a list of all your reactions, starting material, arrow, product, but leave the space over the arrow blank. Where the reagents go. Yeah. yeah. Then you photocopy that list. And as you learn more reactions, maybe every five or so, you take out a clean photocopy and practice filling in those reagents over and over. It's about that consistent recall. And the key word there is consistent. The book really hammers this home. Do a little bit every night. Don't try to binge it all before an exam. Because it's about mastery, not just memorization. Exactly. Cramming might get you through some subjects, maybe. But not this one. You need that web of knowledge, that deep understanding that only comes from steady work. Okay, so once you've got a handle on those single steps, making them feel kind of automatic. Then you level up. Then you level up to multi-step syntheses. Thinking, you know, more than one move ahead. Connecting those reactions. The basic idea is simple enough. The product from your first reaction just becomes the starting material for your second reaction and so on. You're chaining them together. The book gives a neat example, like um, starting with an alkene, you can turn that into a cis alkene, right? Yeah. Using H2 and Lindlar's catalyst. Yep, standard reaction, one step. Then that cis alkene you just made, that's your new starting material. And you could say, react that with OSO4 and H2O2 to make a diol, those two OH groups. Another standard reaction. So put them together, alkenesis, alkenodidiol, that's a two-step synthesis. But, and this is crucial, the book warns you not to try and just memorize all possible two-step or three-step combinations. Oh, absolutely not. That's like trying to memorize every possible chess game. Yeah. It's impossible. There are just way, way too many possibilities. It's totally impractical. So if memorizing sequence is out, what's the smart way? The smart way, the powerful way, is retrosynthetic analysis. Working backward. Working backward. Analyzing the problem from the end product back to the start. And... Uh, something really important the book mentions kind of takes the pressure off yeah you are not expected to just look at a complex synthesis problem and instantly know the answer it's okay to stop think analyze mm. that's what you're supposed to do okay walk us through that example from the book it really clarifies the process let's say you start with a bromo alkane just simple alkane with bromine on it okay Curing material and the goal the product you want is a dibromide same carbon skeleton, but now with two bromine. Got it. Bromokine, debromide. 
How do we get there? So retrosynthesis says start at the end, look at the dibromide, ask yourself, how do I make a dibromide? What reactions do I know? And if you've practiced those one-step reactions... You'll hopefully remember, ah, I can make a dibromide from an alkene, a double bond using Br2. Right. Addition of bromine across the double bond. Classic reaction. Yeah. So step one backward. Product, dibromide, came from an alkene. Exactly. So you draw that alkene. That's your intermediate, the thing right before the final product. Now step two, still backward. Look at that alkene. Ask, can I make this alkene from my original starting material, the bromoalkane? And again, hopefully you know a reaction for that. Yeah. An elimination reaction. Use a base, like naoeat, sodium ethoxide, and you can eliminate HBr from the bromoalkane to form that double bond, the alkene. Bingo. You've connected the product back to the start. So the forward path becomes clear. Bromoalkane, eliminate with naoe, alkene, add Br2. Yep. Done. And... Of course, you have to make sure everything lines up correctly at each step, the stereochemistry, the regiochemistry, where things add, how they're arranged in space. That has to work, too. Absolutely. Those details matter. But this whole process, thinking backwards, step by step, is so much more effective than trying to guess the forward path or memorize endless sequences. It gives you a strategy for any problem. Precisely. And like anything, the more you practice thinking this way, the better you get. The more problems you work through using retrosynthesis, the more natural it becomes. Okay, so practice is essential. Retrosynthesis is the key technique. The book also has this uh, this really clever idea for how to practice effectively, creating your own problems. Yeah, this is a great one. Sounds a bit weird at first, maybe. How does it work? You basically run a synthesis forward on paper, pick a starting material, do a reaction, you know, take the product. Use that product as the starting material for the next reaction. Right. Do that two, three, maybe four times. So you've built a little multi-step pathway yourself. You know exactly how it works because you just designed it. Then, and this is the cool part, you erase everything in the middle. All the intermediate compounds, all the reagents, you just leave the very first starting material you picked. And the very final product you ended up with. Put an arrow between them, and there you go. You've just created a potentially tricky synthesis problem. But here's the catch, obviously. You know the answer. Solving your own problem isn't much of a challenge. Right. So the solution is simple, swap. Get together with a friend, or even better, a study group. You all make a set of problems, maybe 10 or 20 each. And then you trade. You solve theirs, they solve yours. It's described as a very effective way to study. You get a bunch of new problems to solve. You get to see how other people think. You can discuss the tricky ones. It's great for peer support too. And even if you can't find someone to swap with. Even just the act of making the problems is useful. It forces you to think through multi-step sequences and to connect reactions in your head. It reinforces the logic, so it's still valuable. So wrapping this all up then, hmm. what are the absolute keys to getting good at synthesis problems based on this chapter? Okay, I think it really boils down to three main things. First, you had to nail those one-step syntheses. Know your reaction's cold. There yeah. requires constant active review, like that photocopy method. Right, foundation first. Second, train yourself to think backward. Use retrosynthetic analysis. Don't just stare at the starting material hoping for inspiration. Look at the product and work back. That's your strategic tool. Makes sense. And third, practice. Lots and lots of practice. Yeah. Solve problems, and if you can, create problems and swap them. There's just no substitute for actually doing it. You know, listening to this, it really strikes me how much this applies beyond chemistry facing a big, complex goal. Sometimes the best way is to break it down. Mm -hmm. Figure out the step right before the end and the step before that. It's not always about brute force memorization, but about smart strategy. Looking at the problem from different angles, like right. working backwards. Absolutely, it's a problem-solving mindset. So for everyone listening, what really stands out to you about that? How can thinking strategically, maybe even backward, help turn something that feels overwhelming into a series of manageable steps in your own world? Something to think about. Well, thanks for tuning in to this deep dive. We hope it shed some light on the world of organic synthesis. Until next time, keep digging for those insights.